Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ahmed Asim. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, thank you for, very much for having me. Well, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna take you a bit on a, a bit of a journey, um, and it's basically I'm gonna put you in my shoes. My shoes are fun, really, by the way. And um, basically, what I'm gonna start with is that we all have dreams, right? As kids, when we grew up, did we not all have dreams? Whether it was to be the world's greatest ping pong player or to own a Ferrari someday, we all have dreams. And yes, up till today, we still have those dreams. Well, my dream as a child was always to represent South Africa. Now, the reason because of that, I've always wanted to represent South Africa in any sport. And the reason because of that is that I've always watched on TV how these people just get into a plane and they fly everywhere. <laughs> and I thought, I asked my mom one day, I said, Mom, do they pay for these flights and stuff? Mom said, no. So Africa pays for them to fly over. No way. <laughs> and I was like, okay, listen, I want to be part of this crew, definitely. And um, I started training really hard to decide to try every single sport there is, from basketball to netball to everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> and um, eventually found myself on the soccer field playing multiple games, you know, for like tons of clubs, really. And I was so excited. And... Um, I thought to myself, you know, this is really cool, but I want to do something different. Something, you know, I want to try something and something different and see what comes out. And I decided to do life saving. And I found out that life saving was a sport as well. And I thought, oh, you know, this is a really, you know, no one knows much about life saving being a sport. So I thought to myself, let me take this opportunity and try and make the South African team quietly. <laughs> and um there I was, and I decided, you know, I'm going to join Life Saving in 1999, and uh, started training really hard. Eventually found myself in the beach sprinting arena, running across the beach, you know, the typical Baywatch t-shirt off. <laughs> and I mean, I was, it was awesome, you know, you walk on Clifton Beach, and you got your lifeguard can, you, you know, you're looking really spiffy and awesome, and I thought, you know, this is great. And I get paid for this, amazing. And um, I thought to myself, well... What else do I want to do? I want to become a better lifeguard, you know? And I want to rescue people. I want to save lives, you know? I want people to come up to me. Wow, you saved my child. You're amazing. You know, I wanted that feeling. Everyone wants that feeling. And um, I thought, what better to do this than become a better lifeguard? And to become a better lifeguard, you've got to learn to become a stronger, faster lifeguard. You've got to be competent, basically. And... Um, what we did was called routine life-saving training exercises. Now, this teaches you how to become a better lifeguard. And um, on August the 13th, 2006, in Musenberg Falls Bay, South Africa, um, we did a routine life-saving training exercise where we used an inflatable rescue boat, an IRB. And we used this basically to rescue a lot of patients at once. So if a boat should tip over, we're there, we're immediately there, you know, picking up the patients, putting them back into the, the IRB and taking them back to the shoreline. That was our job, basically. And we had to learn how to pick up these patients. You know, you could have a patient there with a broken neck or anything to that effect. And um, on the day, myself and my brother, we just, like, they told us, okay, we're going to be patients. So there were three patients in the water. And uh, myself, my brother, and a friend of mine. And then there was a driver, ob a driver, obviously, and a crewman. Now, the job of the crewman is obviously there to pick up the patient while the driver drives. And um, as we ventured into the water, basically myself, my brother, and my friend got dropped into the water, but according to length, sort of like, you know, depth into water. And uh, there I am, and I remember standing there, and like, I'm looking at my brother, and I'm thinking, I, be the, I don't want to be the deepest guy in the water. And um, eventually, my I see my brother looking at me, and he's got the exact same look on his face. <laughs> and uh, Nick immediately runs into the water. This friend of mine immediately darts into the water. And he stands about waist deep and he says, okay, this is where I'm getting rescued, right here. <laughs> and uh, I remember the lifeguards that were driving the rubber duck, they, they were looking at myself and my brother and they said, do you guys want to lift in? And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take a lift. And um, got slowly into the rubber duck. I just kept a good eye on my brother and sat down. And eventually, like, we started moving in. Now, past is pumping now. You know, I'm going to take it now. Uh, just a bit more, a bit more. Uh, eventually pushed my brother and boom, I was in the water and I was like, yes, yes, I'm about head height. And I'm in the water and my brother eventually gets the, the bad end and he's the deepest guy in the water. So there we are, these three 
pe patients in the water, just acting out scenarios of drowning and everything. And the IRB goes back to the shoreline. The whistle goes off, and the IRB comes and you know, starts picking up the people, basically my friend, myself, and then my brother. As it gets to Nick, Nick gets into the rubber duck, and we start moving on. And as it gets to me, I remember seeing something in the corner of my eye. I, I, I just look, I just glanced over to see what it was. I saw this massive shadow underneath the water. Huge, massive shadow. Fin come out like in the movies, the fin came out like this, and it just started moving slowly like this towards my brother. Now, at that point, when I just saw the shadow, I thought to myself, Ahmad, think positive. It's either the biggest, friendliest dolphin you've ever seen, <laughs> or an amazingly belly filled seal. Those were the two thoughts. And at that point, that's when this fin came out. I started seeing it go towards my brother, and I thought to myself, oh goodness, this is actually happening. You know, this is, it's going down. So immediately, I screamed to the lifeguards and told them, listen, go past me. Get my brother out of the water now. And as the, right, as the IRB went past me, I remember looking at, at the, the situation, my brother over there and the shark over there, and I remember looking at it. And as the shark moved towards me, I thought to myself, oh my word, there's not enough time. So what I did was I started drumming on top of the water, started drumming, kicking about, making a splash, making a huge ruckus. And eventually I saw the shark turn and it started coming towards myself. At that point, they got to my brother and they started pulling him into the rubber duck. And there I am, sort of like doing a bit of an egg beater underwater. I'm sort of like, you know, just trying to keep myself afloat. And at the same time, I'm so alert as to what's going on. And um, the next thing I know, I see the shadow pull up right in front of me, just right in front of me like this. Massive 4.7 meter great white. It comes up right in front of me and it doesn't attack me at first. And immediately I'm, I'm sort of like in a position like this and as this thing hits me, I start sort of like moving against its body. And I remember the texture, it was like this very coarsey sandpaper type of feeling and it was just pure muscle underneath the skin. It was like touching a car with sandpaper on it, it was just amazing. And this thing just came up right in front of me, I started rolling against its body and I was just, I was amazed to be honest. Like, I wasn't screaming or anything, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this thing's coming right next to me, I'm rolling against its body, and eventually the tail just whacks me on the side of my head here. And ladies and gentlemen, it's like being hit with a baseball bat. It's like, boom, it's instant. This thing just goes, bah. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm, you know, what's going on? And I remember looking at this shark is turning its massive body around to come towards me. And as the shark comes towards me, I'm busy doing like sort of like a back pedal to try and move away from it. And... Um, at that point, as the shark's coming towards me, it's amazing how you start thinking so, like your mind just goes into survival mode, hardcore survival mode. And now the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, Ahmed, you have a charging great white at you. What are you gonna do? First of all, you're not, you're gonna, you're not gonna use the human defense mechanism. Now each and every one of us, like we're sitting here, has used the human defense mechanism already. What is the human defense mechanism? If I were to take a tennis ball out of my pocket right now and throw it at you, what is the first thing you would do? Right? You got a 4.7 meter great white shark charging at you. You are not going to do this. Okay? Because you're just going to end up like this. So, <laughs> so there I am. This thing's charging at me. People, I'm telling you, you have absolutely no idea what you're going to do at that point. I was there and I'm busy timing this thing. Standing there and I'm like, oh, yo, where are these guys They're supposed to come pick me up? Right Tariq, where are you? Get here, get here. Next thing I know, shark's right on top of me. First thing that came to my mind, sidestep. <laughs> there I am. Took my left hand, put it on the side of the shark's head. Immediately pushed myself forward. And I thought, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get on this thing's back. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, that's what came to my mind. I'm going to get on the shark's back. My maneuver was working perfectly. Your shark comes, boom, moving in. All I got to do is swing my right leg over, and bam, and there I am. <laughs> Okay, that was, that was basically what I wanted to do. As the shark came to me, boom, maneuver was working, and as I pulled my right leg forward, do you want to come forward? What's going down? You know what's going on? Let me see what's going on. I have a look to see. I saw half my leg was already in the shark's mouth. At that point, the shark, the shark started shaking me around. And to be honest, I felt like absolutely nothing. I was just being shoved around like a rag doll, didn't know what was going on. Immediately, I started screaming for help, started screaming at my brother, Told the lifeguards, get to me, get to me. And at that point, boom, the shark pulls me underneath the water, drags me for about 75 meters. 
and it, the water went, at, my brother explains it to me and says, it was absolute silence after that. And as I was screaming for help, I went down, screaming, losing my breath basically. So the moment I was underwater, I had no breath left. So as I'm being dragged for 75 meters, I start, your chest starts pulsating. I don't know if there's any doctors in the house here, but you start doing this, like you need to breathe. And as I'm being pulled underneath the water, I remember I, I just took my hands, I started hitting this thing as hard as I could to try and get away with it. And I started hitting this thing. Eventually, I thought to myself, I'm not, this is not winning. So what I did was I took my, my left leg. I thought, yo, I got a good, strong left leg left. What am I going to do? Boom, I started kicking the shark on the side of its head. And with every kick I gave, I could, I could feel myself like moving slowly and slowly away from the shark. And at one point, the shark started shaking me. Now, if you take a twig or, or a bunch of sucker sticks or something, and you start bending it slowly, it starts splintering. It makes that crackling sound. And that's what was starting to happen to my, to my shin bone. And as it started going, it started crackling, 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 and eventually, boom, snapped. Clearly, I didn't know what was going on. I just thought, I'm free. <laughs> and I need to breathe so badly. So I swam to the top of the surface. And the worst part at that point was hearing the sound of the rubber duck's engine moving away from me and then coming back to me and then moving away from me. It's like you didn't know whether you're going to be rescued or not. So as I got to the top of the surface, I started blacking out. You know, I, I just, I felt like I just ran the two oceans. I couldn't, I just, I started sinking down. And I just gave up at that point. And as I gave up, that's when I could hear the sound of the rubber duck's engine coming towards me. And at that point, I just saw this hand being held, like it was basically lying in the water being dragged towards me. And as it's being dragged towards me, that's when this sort of like this hand decided to get a head and this head as well is looking at me. I looked at this person, I just left my arm up like this. And as it got closer, I could see it was the hand of my brother. And as my brother came up to me, he immediately grabbed my hand like this and pulled me up out of the water and he said, don't worry, bro, I've got you. And as he pulled me up into the water, out of the water, I remember falling into the rubber duck. And that's when the shark, the shark actually came up and tried to sort of like ram us over. And um, I remember lying there and my brother immediately jumps on top of me and he closes my eyes and he says, don't worry, I've got you. And uh, I asked him, bro, what's the situation down with my leg? And he says, don't worry, you just got a little cut on your leg. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's got leftover flesh in his hand and he's just sort of like holding it as like a sort of like a, a human tourniquet basically. And uh, next thing I know, we get to the shoreline and where I'm met by the paramedics and um, I get taken to Constantinburg Hospital here in Cape Town, South Africa. And um, I mean, I wake up in hospital and uh, my brother tells me, Ahmad, I'm sorry to tell you, but you've lost your leg. Immediately, I look underneath the blanket to see what had gone, and my leg is missing. I thought to myself, well, there goes all my dreams of wanting to ever make the South African team um, in any sport, basically. And uh, I was lying in hospital, and I thought to myself, what am I going to do now? Do I just give up? Well, I decided, you know, there's two paths in life. You can either take the negative route, or you can take the positive route. And because of the inspiration that my parents give me, and my brother gave me, and a lot of friends of mine coming to visit me, they told me, oh, but don't give up. You can still go and achieve your dreams. I thought to myself, you know, why not why don't give it a bash and see what happens? And I went out there, and uh, believe it or not, I was in the hospital for one week. Leg missing, amputated twice, blah, blah, blah. I was out of there. I told the guy, listen, give me crutches. I'm going to do my thing here. <laughs> and uh, I was at home, got home. My, bro my brother came up to me and he said, Ahmad, oh, you know, such a thing as the Paralympics. I was like, what's that? Oh, Paralympics, man. Uh, Natalie Dutoy, Oscar Pistorius, you know, they, they're all in the Paralympic team. It's a South African team. You go, you get the exact same benefits, fly over for free. <laughs> uh, I thought to myself, you know, wow, like, you know, I, I want to do this. And immediately, um, so, so I got a call from my friend Natalie, and she said, uh, my, myself and Natalie knew each other long way before. And, uh, and she told me, like, you know, Listen, the same things happened to me, and you know. So basically, just give up the, the like the depression part and just go for the positivity part. Because look what I am today. And I thought to myself, Wow, she can do it. I can do it. <laughs> Next thing I know, I was in the pool, um, and I was training really hard. And I thought to myself, You know, I'm gonna go into this team, and I decided to do swimming uh, because of my love for the ocean as well. I decided, you know, let me get into the water again. I started training really hard. Eventually, I found myself captaining the Western Province swimming team to victory four years in a row, able-bodied swimming team, four years in a row. <laughs> 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 
eventually found myself on the way to Beijing, China for the 2008 Beijing Paralympics and representing South Africa on numerous occasions around the world. Just got back from Brazil. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> 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 for personal reasons. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it was just an absolute pleasure. And it just goes to show you, basically my message is that I want to pass over to you guys is not even the four and a half, not even the 4.7 meter great white shark can stop you from wanting to achieve your goals. You just got to go out there, believe in yourself, okay? If something bad happens, you know, just look past it, move on. Life does not stand still, ladies and gentlemen. It moves on all the time. So if something bad happens, get it out of the way and move on. You can only live a positive life if you choose that. And you've got to have that attitude. That's the most important thing. You've got to have that positive attitude. If you want to achieve something in life, go get it. Nothing can stop you. Okay, I was back in the water. I did the Robben Island swim, believe it or not. Okay, finished in the top 20 of the Robben Island swim. And those are just minor feats. I still have so much to do. Okay, I've got London coming up. I want to come back with some bling. Okay. <laughs> and I believe that each and every one of us here today can still achieve your dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been absolutely fantastic. Go out there and enjoy life. Thank you very much. <laughs>